In today's video, I'm going to continue working on the mini jet boat build. But before I get started, I just want to give you guys a quick recap of where everything sits because it has been a while since I have done anything to the mini jet boat. And first, I just want to show you that the hull is completely welded both inside and out. And all of the edges are ground down all the way up here to the nose. And I have also installed the front and the rear tie downs. Next, the engine has been removed from the jet ski. And if you look here, you can see I've got a whole lot of space here in the shop because that jet ski is gone. The only thing left is the engine and a couple of totes full of parts and electronics and hoses and whatnot. Next, I have installed the jet pump onto the boat and I have also installed the intake. Now this is just temporarily installed. It's bolted in, but I have not done the sealant all around the edges because I have run into my first big problem. And that problem is the drive shaft for the pump is too long. Now the way this works for a Yamaha engine, there's this adapter plate and that is supposed to be welded onto the intake right here. And then you take the bearing and slide it on. And it is supposed to mate up with this plate after it's been welded on. And the problem I have is there's about two and seven eighths too much length on the drive shaft and the bearing won't go on any more than what it is right here. So that means I'm going to have to send the drive shaft and the pump assembly off and have this shortened three inches because I can't do that job myself. I do not have the tools that are necessary to cut and respline a drive shaft. And fortunately for me, Jeremy from Punisher Mini Jet Boats doesn't live too far away from here. So I'm going to head over to his place and let him shorten this drive shaft because he has a lathe and a bridge port and it's all set up to do this type of work. So I took my camera down to Jeremy's shop and filmed the process, but the lighting isn't very good there. So I didn't get a whole lot of good footage, but it's really interesting how he does this. He has all of his machines set up, so I didn't even have to remove the pump from the drive shaft. And he just starts out by throwing this in a lathe and he takes 20 thousandths of an inch off of the drive shaft where the new splines are going to go. And then next, he just cuts off that unneeded length of the drive shaft using a porta band, which kind of shocked me because I thought this was some kind of hardened steel, but it's not. It turns out it's just some form of stainless steel. And then the final step, he just puts the drive shaft and the pump assembly on his Bridgeport mill and he's got an indexer where he can rotate it a certain amount of degrees for each cut and then he just cuts a groove in there for the new splines and then rotates it cuts another groove rotates it again and then after I think 20 or 24 grooves um, he's made a complete rotation around that drive shaft and it's pretty much done at that point. All right, so I'm back at my shop and this is what was removed from the drive shaft. And you can see I have got the pump and the drive shaft assembly mounted on the boat. And now the Lovejoy bearing assembly and mounting plate will fit flush up against the intake. So now this is finished, I'm going to focus my attention on the engine. These Yamaha engines are pretty big engines. These are four cylinder engines. You can see there's four coil packs right here. So there's four spark plugs. So there's four cylinders in this engine. It also has an intercooler and a supercharger on it that stick out on the front. So not only is the motor bigger, but it is also longer. So long that it will not fit in the engine bay without cutting a hole in the bulkhead. So I guess while that pump and drive shaft are being worked on, I'm gonna work on cutting a hole in the bulkhead so that that engine can stick through and fit in the engine bay. And then I'm also gonna to have to build a box around the engine to cover it up once it's mounted into the boat. 
And before I go and cut a huge hole in my bulkhead, I wanna make sure that I'm cutting the right size and shape of a hole. So I've got the engine right here sitting on the dolly and I've tried to measure it and it's really hard to get a good reference here because there's no really flat surfaces to just run the tape measure across. So I'm thinking it's gonna be about 20 inch square is about what I'm gonna need. So I've taken this piece of cardboard and I've cut a 20 inch square in there. This is my center line. And if I line it up with the center of the engine and move it through here, you can see it just barely wants to bump this corner of the intercooler. So I'm thinking 20 might be a little bit too small. So I'm gonna widen it about an inch on each side and I think that will do it. And now I need to go and mark the hole on the bulkhead to cut out. And here's the square I'm gonna cut out of the bulkhead. If you look, this first inner line, that was the 20 inch square that was the same size as the cardboard. And I widened it an inch on each side and I think I'm gonna need a little bit more height so I also widen it two inches on top. So this outside line is what I'm going to cut out. Okay, so I got that hole cut out and hopefully this will be the biggest hole that I have to cut in this boat. That looks massive. If I was just taking a look at this, I would say the hole is way too big for that engine. But I did take that piece of cardboard and made that template. So I know this should be close to what I need to get that engine in there. And one other thing that I was worried about, I was worried that the bulkhead might be weakened by cutting that much metal out, but it is just as strong as it was right before I made the cut. And if I had to, I could make some brackets down here at the bottom and like weld it to the bottom of the boat, but I don't think that's gonna be necessary. So let's get the engine in here, make sure we can get it at the right angle. This hole doesn't need to be cut any taller. I think if anything, it may need to come up a little bit taller, but I won't know until I get the engine in here. So let's get it in here and find out. So I've got the engine hanging here in place. This is about where it needs to go and it is hanging from my engine hoist. And I did need to put blocks underneath the boat and that was so the engine hoist had enough room to slide under there. But I believe this is about how it's going to go when it is all mounted. I've got about five and a half inches of clearance right here, which is about the measurements of the mounting plate, the bearing assembly and the love joy. And I can't, I can't mount this in until I get that pump back with the shortened shaft, but I've got it hanging in here, just eyeballed, lined up. And I think the angle, it may be hanging this way just a little bit too much, but this is, this is close. So if you look here on the front, probably didn't need to widen the hole. The 20 inches there would have been sufficient, but definitely needed to raise it two inches like I did because this dipstick is really close. Also this high point of the engine right here. But other than that, it is all good. And also I was worried about having clearance of the oil pan and the floor of the boat because I was worried I didn't put enough angle in the intake when I welded it. But I'll grab the GoPro and throw it under here and show you. There is about almost two inches of clearance. There's plenty of room, no worries. So I'm glad that I've gotten this far in the project because now I know that I can continue working on this without any worries. So now that I know there are no clearance issues with the intake or the engine, it's time to flip the boat over and install that UHMW plastic. And I've got a couple of buddies and my brother, they're headed over this way now, and that's exactly what we're gonna do.
So you guys got to see about three hours worth of work right there in about two minutes, and it went really smooth. Uh, I had two drills and an impact driver. In one drill, we had a combination bit, and I've used these bits before in uh, my CNC projects, and they work really, really well. They both drill and tap a hole at the same time. And if you've never seen these before, I'll put a link to them down in the description. I highly suggest if, the, if you're gonna build this type of a project to get those combination bits because that really cut down on the time that it took to drill and tap all of the holes in the bottom of the boat. And then also in another drill, I had a countersink bit. And then finally in the impact driver, I had a little hex uh, wrench adapter uh, on there and that's what we actually drove the screws into the boat with and it, it worked really well like I said we had a you know, assembly line going and once we got in a little rhythm uh, everything just went right into place so it feels good to be out here in the shop again working on the jet boat project I did get a lot of progress made in this video and before I end the video I do want to give a shout out to a few people I want to thank my top level patreon supporters and that is Bobby Elliott, Jason Russell, JJ Perez, and Michael Curry. I wanna thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon. And if you wanna support me on Patreon, there will be a link down in the description and a link somewhere up here in one of these corners here in a few seconds. I also wanna thank Jeremy Williams at Punisher Jet Boats for getting me hooked up on that pump shaft or the, the drive shaft and the pump and getting that turned around really quick for me. And if you like the video, uh, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.